what your country can do for you. There's a lot of fans! I can't be able to believe the fans! Peppina, oh, your little mouse, so won't you go away? One ringy dingy. Oh, it's a ringy. Hand off to Griffin, cracks the middle, gets the five, touchdown, Ohio State! Oklahoma, where the wind comes sweeping down the plane. I'm interested to know, Gracie, who's your choice? Need you ask, George. Time now for Spinning My Dad's Vinyl. Here with all his skips, scratches, and pops is my dad, Frank Vaccarello. Thanks, sweetie. And thank you for tuning into Episode 9 of Spinning My Dad's Vinyl. This episode will have some of the funnest music you will hear from my dad's collection. Everybody in my family enjoyed this album, and its condition will prove it. Even my younger brother has been waiting patiently for this episode. So, get ready for plenty of Italian fun songs in Volume 9, Lou Monti and Peppino. And you might catch me chair dancing if you're watching the video version of this. Signori e signori, io mi chiamo Peppino Zurichiel. And what a moving yarn. Peppino, oh, you little mouse, so won't you go away? Find yourself another house to run around and play. You scare my girl, you eat my cheese, you even drink my wine. I've tried so hard to catch you, but you trick me all the time. Ci sta un'usura, ci è la basciusella, re d'umore. Ogni sera che le esce, quando la casa è scura. E non mi è da cucina, balla sulla su. Ma parlo malandrina, pure la gatta sa paura. Peppino, usura, ci è la, ma fatta scomparì. Mannaggia, usura, ci è la, a casa è nata io. No, I'm a Calabrese, a nut. The other night I called my girl, I asked her, then through the door she screamed at what she saw. There was little Peppina doing a cha cha on the floor. Peppino Zuna Gill, I'm about to scumbari. Manna Gio Zuna Gill, a cousin not dying. Stas here in the Gugin and the Morgavina Jalassa. E quando si embriaga, Peppina Giangappa. Mamma Peppino, ask if you. If I ever catch, I'm gonna throw you right in a bagnaro. El non ci beaggio formaggio americano. Ella va trovando no poche par mungià, se fatta giatte giatte gusta vita buona, e quando che la cammina para proprio in un calandone. Peppino su regil, ma fatta scomparì, mannaggia su regil, a casa è nata lì, sta si renda cucina no poche vina già la sa, e quando si embriaga Peppino già in gappà. Luigi! I got a present for you. Ah, oh, you're a nice mouse. How do you like? How do you have in the box? Oh, my nut juice would have yelled a musk a shut up on a mouse trap. Hey, Mullen Tree. Now, why would you put your hand in that box, stupido? Uh, there is the title track, Papino, the Italian Mouse. It's written by Ray Allen and Wandra Morell, two names you are going to hear quite often in this episode. Why this album? This record just has my family and fun written all over it. My siblings and I are second and third generation Italian, but we don't speak the language. The album did teach us some words. My brothers and I did learn the word for bathtub because of this song. And who couldn't imagine a little cartoonish, little sarcastic mouse as a perfect foil for Lou. In fact, one of my brothers used the album artwork on this album for a promotional sign for his Eagle Scout project. That's how connected we were to this album as a family. 
But the album is also filled with other humorous Italian songs that are just downright catchy, including one that was sung in a famous movie from the 1970s. You'll hear that one a little later. And one that is a regular show tune for a men's choir at a Midwestern university. And I'll point that one out when we get to it. But whenever this album was played, we knew all the English words and we pretended to sing the Italian ones or even the made-up ones. When the scent of her sweet perfume makes you fly like a toy balloon, you're in love, you're in love, eh, gumba? Tickety, tickety, tickety. When the stars seem to fall and surround you, and you hear mandolins all around you, you're in love, you're in love, hey, gumba. Tickety, tickety, tickety. When she dreams of confetti and roses, and she plans a big family, in your sleep you count little noses, and you hope that it's 23. When she calls you her sweet bambino, and she thinks that you look like a dino, she's in love, you're in love, hey, gumba. Tickety, tickety, tickety. Attenzione, signore, signore, come bello a faro l'amore, con un bacio il cuore ti va. Tickety, 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 come bello a passeggiare, a braccetto di giro il mare, se la mano ti stringerà. Tickety, 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 che fortuna, che allegrezza. Quando che la ti accarezza, se ti dedici o dolce amore, che ti voglio con tutto il cuore, che sarà, che lo sa, che sarà, tickety, tickety, tickety. She dreams of confetti and roses And she plans a big family In your sleep you count little noses And you hope that it's 23 When she calls you her sweet bambino And she thinks that you look like a Dino She's in love, you're in love, eh, gumba Tickety, tickety, tickety Bells will ring, ting-a-ling, eh, gumba Hey Goomba, Tiki T, Tiki To, Tiki Ta. Another one written by Ray Allen and Wandra Morell. Time now to talk about today's selection. Lou Monty. Papino, the Italian Mouse, and other Italian fun songs. It's on the Reprise Records label. It is number R6058. It's part of the Pop Series series. No other information on that. It is a mono LP. It was made in the U.S., released in 1962. It's under the genre of pop and the novelty style. So now we're going to read some liner notes from Mort Good. The mouse has been playing as humans for laughs for years. Back in the days before nursery rhymes became nursery crimes, the Pied Piper led a fun parade throughout Middle Europa and points east and west. We've had Mickey Mouse and Mighty Mouse, the mouse that roared and the Mouseketeers. We've had the eek and the shriek. The mouse can do most anything and bring enjoyment, even scare timid ladies. Now that famous Italian animal trainer Lou Monti sings a tale of high adventure about his encounter with Peppino, the Italian mouse. This little rascal has a voice of his own. He knows what he wants. He knows he's gonna get it. He knows how to get us. You'll join his fan club. You'll join the Lou Monti fan club too. This album is chock full of chuckles. They come in all shapes and varieties. Lou has been molding songs and stories into his own style for more than a generation. He has entertained two groups of people, 
those who speak Italian and those who do not speak Italian. <laughs> All right. I need to, at this point, also to describe the artwork, uh, especially for people who are uh, not being able to watch the video version of this. This is a very unique cover. It's um, very, very identifiable. So yes, there's. it's very colorful. Papino, the Italian mouse, and other Italian fun songs is in bold letters and actually outlined. But it's Papino, the Italian mouse himself. Kind of imagine Speedy Gonzalez from the um, uh, cartoons that probably you grew up in and probably saw lots of reruns in. He's got the hat that Heisenberg wears in uh, Breaking Bad. Uh, he's got a nice Italian outfit on. He's got a handlebar mustache. In one hand, he's got a wheel of cheese. And in the other, he has got a half a bottle of wine. So there you go. You have now been introduced to Peppino, the Italian mouse. What, what's the album worth? Well, Discogs had, had a wide disparity in prices. The lowest came in at $1.50. The highest came in at $33.33. Came in at a median of $6.51. Amazon, nobody had it in stock, so we could only imagine what it might be worth once it gets there. I couldn't find it anywhere else. No eBay, nothing else. My dad's album is in very poor condition, both the cover and the record itself. You already heard a big skip in Pepino, and the rest of the album is very hissy. The album cover itself is in really poor condition. My dad used to use black electrical tape for everything in the days before duct tape. This album cover is being held together on three sides by black electrical tape, of course, only leaving the slot to bring the, the slide the album in and out. I, I bet I couldn't even get a dollar out of this, so I'm going to value my dad's record at a quarter but it doesn't matter the memories on it are priceless and uh speaking of memories my brothers and i sat in the front row of the movie theater when we saw jaws you may remember a very different version of this next song while the main characters were out in the middle of the ocean getting drunk <laughs> Show me the way to go home, I'm tired and I want to go to bed. That little old wife maker gave me a drink and it went right through my head. Whenever I leave home and go to bed, who don't roam, you can always hear me singing that song. Show me the way to go home. J.J. and Ella, Jenny and Ugal, when your madina se metta cavalla, una ragga la campanella, va cercando una gallinella. Quando comincia a bucca, Tugano comincia a paia, e si gigi di nello non t'ha Tugano, galla da t'ha mangià. Who drank all the wine? That little old winemaker? What umbriago? Ever see his feet? Oh boy, all purple. Show me the way to go home. I'm tired and I want to go to bed. That little old wine maker gave me a drink and it went right to my head. Whenever I leave home and go to Naples on Rome. You can always hear me singing that song Show me the way to go home Show me the way to go home Of course, the shark interrupted their singing of that song in the movie Show me the way to go home Written by Irving King who was actually Jimmy Campbell and Reg Connolly, a pair of songwriters and publishers in the 1920s and 30s who often went under just that one name. Time now to learn about the artist. Lou Monti, an Italian-American of Calabrian heritage, was born as Louis Scaglione on April 2, 1917 in Manhattan, New York. 
He played the guitar and started singing as a child, beginning his professional career as a singer, comedian, and musician as a young man just prior to World War II. After a stretch in the military, Monty settled in Lyndhurst, New Jersey, and his first real break came when he had a radio show in Newark. Eventually, Monty was given a television program on that same popular station, WAAT. As June Bundy notes, quote, Although Lou had been singing professionally for 15 years, it wasn't until he recorded an Italian-English version of Dark Town Strutter's Ball at the end of 1953 that he hit the big time. After that, his records, both comedic and not, sold in the millions. He appeared regularly at many famous nightclubs, and unlike most Italian-American comedians of the era, he was seen frequently on national TV. At the pinnacle of his popularity, he was promoted in various press releases as the godfather of Italian humor and the king of Italian-American music. Lou Monti died in Pompano Beach, Florida in June of 1989. The medium of most of Lou Monti's comedy is song, although his extensive and impressive nightclub act also contained a good deal of stand-up. Many of his songs were sung and nightclub acts performed in English with a liberal interspersing of Italian dialect, Neapolitan and Calabrian. As one commentator had noted, Monty translates American music into Italian and Italian music into English. As was stated in a past nightclub review, Monty's song along is heavily laden with pizza pieces, including Italo verses of his American numbers with emphasis generally on comedy tunes. Monty's appeal to the Italian American audience can be understood in both emotional and social terms. Emotionally, his humor provided some Italian Americans with a sense of comfort, of one upmanship, or the sense of being a part of an inside joke, and socially, of having a slice of their world recognized by others. His appeal to other ethnic groups was based upon their perception that his humor related to their own experiences in associating to American society. I want to thank a family run LouMonty.com for that bit of bio material now. Now, time to hear a song my dad used to sing or whistle around the house. Way muddy, way muddy. When the Hey, Marie. Hey, Marie. 
Giamatti. That song is credited to Wandra Morell on the album, uh, but it's from someone else. So here is this episode's interesting side note, and it has to do with how many ways that last song has been sung. What you just heard was not the original Lumanti version of A Marie. The original Lumanti version is really up-tempo. Some of his versions have a couple of female singers saying, Yes, Louis, no, Louis, in the background. One version sounds more like a Dixieland tune. In the version you just heard, Monty actually cuts out the entire opening line from those versions and rearranges the chorus. This, this is what I found when I did a deep dive looking up the meaning of some of the lyrics. So that's why it became an interesting side note. In fact, even Mort Good noted in the liner notes for the album, he sings an entirely new version of his famous A. Marie, soft and tender and touching. But that song isn't exclusive to Lou Monti. His version is actually an adaptation of an operatic tune called Maria Marie, written by Eduardo du Capua and Vincenzo Russo. And you can hear great versions sung by Mario Lanza and Francesco Albanese if you check it out on YouTube. I'm not sure which version my dad would whistle or sing. Maybe it was the Dean Martin version, starts out slow and gets jazzy. Or maybe it was the Louis Prima version, which is a jazzy and up-tempo from the very start and maybe even a little suggestive with its lyrics. I don't think he ever whistled as slow as the Lumanti song we just heard, though. But because of the album featured on this episode, what you just heard was the version my siblings were used to hearing. Okay, up next an Italian version of a song made popular by Tennessee Ernie Ford. Another day older and deeper in debt Was in a morta vaga che la la Cogliere de non de da mangiare Otto pare scarpe, otto pare casette Na veste se leve, na veste se mette I femmine su fatto per mangiare E l'uomo non si fa te pezza paia, load sixty tons. What do you get? Another day older and deeper and dead. Less than a month of vaga, kill a lie. Pogliere de non de da mangiare. Madena la sera sembra zappa Più stante di sempre, più vecchia di ma E se non porta vaga, che la la Mogliere di non di da mangiare You load six to ten What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt E se non porta vaga, che la la Mogliere di non di da mangiare You load six to ten What do you get? Another day older and deeper in debt Yes, and on board the bag I can't rely I'm full yet to do And if I'm unjust There is the Italian version of 16 Tons Written by Merle Travis there is no way to express how much I enjoyed putting this episode together. This album will always be what the Vaccarello family was all about. Always remind me about good times, good food, good family camaraderie. It represents the Italian-American mix that my family is. And now that uh, both my parents are gone, my siblings and I still have this album to remember the good times. And... Uh, there were plenty of those. Okay, we're not going to twist on out of here just yet. Round and round like a 
And shout, oh, hey, paisano, twist the paliano, oh, hey, calabrese, twist it like a fraser, oh, gira cane, gira lava, jimbo, twist, ma così si va. Twist Italiano, of course, written by Ray Allen and Wandra Morell. So, hey, Paisano, we're going to grab a bonus track on this episode because I'm having way too much fun. And we're going to read the liner notes from Mort Good to introduce this last tune. Are you certain you know the facts of the discovery of America? There have been arguments about this since 1492. What did go on? If you want to hear history set back centuries, listen to the Monty Theory as it is espoused in Please, Mr. Columbus. It's as logical as is the idea that the Earth is round. Please, Mr. Columbus is the inside story of what really happened on that momentous Cook's tour and the discovery of Chicken Luigi. Fourteen hundred ninety-two, three ships sailed out the sea, the Nina and the Pinta and the Santa Maria. And as they sailed the stormy sea on that historic day, from way up in the crow's nest you could hear Luigi say, Please, Mr. Columbus, and turn the ship around. Take me back, I want to feel my two feet on the ground. Oh, why you tell it, Isabella, that the world is round. Please, oh, Mr. Columbus, and turn the ship around. But Chris took out his mandolin and he began to play. They sang and danced a da da until the break of day. They ate up all the provolone and drank up all the wine. But still up in the crow's nest you could hear Luigi crying. Please, Mr. Columbus, the turn of the ship around. Take me back, I want to feel my two feet on the ground. Oh, why you tell Isabella that the world is round? Please, oh, Mr. Columbus, the turn of the ship around. Oh, 
And then one day they sighted land just off the starboard bow. Columbus said, I told you so, the journey's over now. An Indian shouted from the shore, I will no be at Seba. Luigi turned around and said, hey, who's it for the Dalian? I'm a major, Mr. Columbus, don't take me back no more. I'm going to stay right here and make the chief my father-in-law. I'm glad you tell it, Isabella that the world is round. I don't know where we are, but there's paisanas all around. Please, Mr. Columbus, turn the ship around. That was, of course, written by Ray Allen, Wandra Morell, and they added a third writer on this one, Sam Salzberg. If you want to see an extra entertaining version of that song, check out the BGSU Alumni Men's Chorus version on YouTube. And by the way, Bowling Green State University is my sister's alma mater. Thank you very much for tuning into Volume 9, Lou Monty and Pepino, however you did. I hope you saw that I had a lot of extra fun with this episode. If you want more information, head over to SpinningMyDad'sVinyl.com. I'll be back next week with all my skips, scratches, and pops with Volume 10, Louis Armstrong, The Jazz Masterpiece, Part 1. Go with the flow, my friends. <laughs>